Hi guys, welcome to another Sunday service. Um, before we start, let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you that we can learn uh, another lesson about you. Um, Lord, would you help us to stay focused um, and listen to your word so that as it enters our heart, it may transform us to be more like Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. So today's lesson is called Knowing How It Ends. Um, and before we go on, let's read our theme Bible passage. Ready, set, go. We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. For whoever loves God is known by God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. So I hope that with all the lesson that we've been learning, um, that it's making your heart grow for God and grow for uh, God's people. And our weekly Bible trivia is here. It's already round 11. And so that means that we are, we are almost done with our curriculum, 12 week curriculum. So uh, we are excited to start a new one, but let's continue with our lesson. So our first question is, what book in the Bible tells us how everything will end? Hint is, it's the last book in the Bible. Very good, Revelations. Uh, question number two, who wrote the book of Revelation? This may be a little tough, but if you go to the first chapter of Revelations, it'll tell you. And this person named John wrote it. Question number three, who will return again according to Revelation? And that's right, that's very easy, right? It's Jesus Christ. So I have here a girl reading a book and I'm going to say that it seems like she's really enjoying it. But today's lesson is about spoiler alerts. Basically, when um, some of us, we uh, before we even start a book or a movie, we like to find out what happens at the end, right? Um, so um, I sometimes just search through the internet to see what happens, how it ends, what happens to this character or that, or even in a book, you can just flip through the pages, go to the last page and see how it ends. That's because um, some people are just impatient. Some just like to know what happens before they start. Um, some, they just don't want to spend time, you know, watching or reading a sad story. So they find out beforehand, um, so uh, before they start reading. Or for some people, you know, it gives them a peace of mind knowing how everything will come to an end. And so in the Bible, we actually do have a book that gives us a spoiler alert. It's basically how everything that we know, this world, everything will come to an end. And so I think the reason God gave us this book, I think part of the reason is that so god is letting us know that when jesus comes back um i know there things may get uh, scarier and um, difficult but there is hope and that jesus uh, is creating a new heaven and a new earth for uh, the believers so i think part of it is is to encourage us so um, the passage that we're gonna read is in revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 7 um, and so let's read it together um, and find out what um, God says about the end of the world. Ready, set, go. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. 
They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be, they will be my children. And so God is promising all this, this water that will be free for us to drink for um, people that love Jesus. And isn't it an amazing passage that reminds us how good God is to us? Um, now we're going to watch a short clip that summarizes the book of Revelation. So everybody, look at the screen and pay attention. God's story. Recreation. So part of God's story is about when he recreates the world. And it begins like this. Remember the garden where the first humans, Adam and Eve, lived with God? It was a perfect world. Everybody joyful, included, safe, and loved. Lots of laughter, playing, and exploring. Basically, whatever we needed to be happy and comfortable, it was there. There was no such thing as sadness, or boredom, or pain, or hate, or death, or anything bad. Kids, can you imagine living in a world like that? Well, God promised to recreate another perfect world for his family sometime in the future. It's really hard to understand what a perfect world would be like, since life can be full of hurt and disappointment. So God told us a little bit about it in the Bible, and even sent his angel to visit a man named John and show him, so John could write it down for us. We still can't picture it exactly, but God wants us to try to imagine it, and he wants us to get really, really excited. See, here's what the angel showed John. Jesus on a throne, a perfect king in a place with no hunger, no crime, no war, and millions of angels saying blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne. Everybody was excited about this king. John also saw a city coming down from heaven, bright with God's glory and sparkling with precious jewels of glitter. We don't know exactly how bright God's glory is, but it probably makes the sunniest day look cloudy. Don't worry, though. You can't get a sunburn in the new world, partly because we might not need some of God's glory, but also because there will be no pain. Anyway, this city had a wall with 12 pearl gates guarded by 12 angels. The wall was made of white jasper, and the city was pure gold, gold like glass. A crystal clear river would flow straight from the throne of God with water we can scoop up and drink whenever we want. And the water is special. When we drink it, we'll live forever. In fact, no people, animals, or plants will ever die in the new world. Now you may wonder what happens to all the people throughout history who chose to be in God's family, but died before he recreated the world. Well, they'll come back to life and live forever in the perfect world, too. And God promised us other stuff. For starters, he'll wipe away the tears from our eyes. He'll give us new bodies that don't hurt anywhere and don't get sick. There won't be any fear. We'll forget everything bad that happened to us on Earth. Everybody there will be a part of God's family. And everyone will treat each other with love. Because when we see the amazing place God created for us, we'll finally understand just how much God has always loved us. And the best part? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will live there with us too. There are many other things God is waiting to surprise us with. And some things he told us, like world peace, no sunburns, and always being loved, are hard for us to imagine. But we can trust that God will keep his promise to recreate the world, and that this world will be wonderful, and everyone who lives there will be filled with joy forever. And that's the story of recreation. Isn't that amazing that um, when Jesus comes back that there will be no more pain, no more tears, no more death, no more sunburn. So uh, we are looking for that day. But the thing is that we, we don't know when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen in this lifetime or 100 years from now. But that's what God is promising us. And because God says so, um, it is trustworthy and we can trust that God will keep his promises. 
And so um, the book of Revelation again reveals how the world would end. And also it reveals that for those who love and know Jesus, um, he wants us to remind us that um, he, Jesus is coming back again and that we will be reunited with him and live with him forever. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you guys are still not sure if you know Jesus or if you love Jesus, that you can start from there. You can start from thinking, hmm, do I really know Jesus? If you are not sure, you can reach out to your parents and ask them um, what the process is like. How, do, how are you for sure? Um, know that you love Jesus or you can also ask your teacher so don't be afraid to um, ask the questions and another great place to start is by praying asking God to help you to know Jesus more to love Jesus more as well so I hope that the book of Revelation reminds you that even though there is sin in this world there is darkness and a lot of chaos happening even now that um, all this will come to an end and those who believe in Jesus will um, live happily in, uh, with Jesus forever. So that's it for today's lesson. Let's all close our eyes and pray um, to end today's lesson. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the book of Revelation um, for, that reminds us, Lord, that Jesus is coming back and there is a new heaven and a new earth prepared for us um, where we get to live with Jesus forever and ever. And Lord, we look forward to that day. We look forward to the day where there will be no more pain, no more tears, and no more death, God. So um, until that day comes, Lord, I ask that you give us strength and courage to live like Jesus did on earth. So we praise you and worship you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.